Hey, I'm Ben. I'm Josh. And we should start a band, apparently. Perfect instinct. <laughs> Don't worry, they'll get to the point eventually. They have a point, right? Right? It's Founder Quest time! And today we don't have Star, because Star is on vacation this week. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fireside chat. I will be on vacation next week and the week yeah, after. I, nice. I don't know if you saw, I extended my vacation. I <laughs> didn't was, see that. So, yeah, so surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks back to back. That's, that's Yeah, cool. I decided like I'm feeling it and I don't think a week's going to be enough. So decided yeah, to go for I it. I get that. I get that. It's funny, like I was looking, so we started this vacation calendar recently, since we are looking at transitioning away from base camp, where our vacation calendar was, we are now putting our vacation calendar in Google calendar because we use G Suite for our, for all of our stuff. I set up this vacation calendar and I noticed that Star put one on there and then Josh put on a vacation and then Kevin put on a vacation and then Ben Finley, just like week after week after week. It's like everybody's taking a vacation. I was like, hmm, all right. So I yeah, put myself on vacation. Put yourself in there, yeah. <laughs> I did, yeah. yeah. I added myself yesterday to the week after Ben Finley's vacation. <laughs> I don't know if you went and look. I, I went in and like just put a bunch of vacations for like the rest of the year for myself. I saw that. Yeah. And I mean, That's like awesome. I, they might change, but I figured like if I at least put them in there, I'll that'll like force me to think about it and decide because that's, yeah, that's been like an ongoing problem. Like I always wait too long and then, you know, finally take the vacation when I just desperately need it. And yeah, yeah, I want to avoid that cycle. Like we're supposed to be, this is supposed yeah. to be sustainable. <laughs> this, is, this is a calm company. It means lots yeah, of vacation, like, right? Yeah. We should be calm if we're running a calm company. I like that, that idea of putting on these dates tentatively and just planning on it. That's, I might try that. Yeah, you should just like plan it. Yeah, plan them out. And yeah, I also, yeah, I put the, I put our like traditionally long winter vacation on there too. I think it's currently like the last two weeks of December and the first week of January, which we can, mm -hmm. we can always like move that around or sometimes we do the hack week or whatever. But yeah, I've come to cherish that tradition. I like, it's I like nice. having that knowing that's going to be downtime, you know? Yeah. The first week of the year off is kind of like, there's something about that, like where you're not, you don't have to like go back to work the first, you know, like the day after new year's or whatever, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that feels really nice. I mean, in reality, we're still on call. I mean, so yeah. like if something broke, we're going to work, but, but yeah, it is nice not having that expectation of showing up and doing actual productive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the low bandwidth, low bandwidth mode. Yeah. It's also uh, this past winter when we did that, I used that to just experiment with some stuff, work related stuff like Elasticsearch and whatever. So that's kind of fun. It's a tinkering time. Even if we don't do an official mm -hmm. hack week, it's still a good time to do some tinkering and get some of those yeah. creative juices going. Read some books on computer science or something like that. Get excited yeah. about it again. Well, you know, going through this, uh, the SOC 2 compliance thing, going to the I type 2 for the first time audit. One of the things that I came across that was new was this continuing education tracking thing. So they want the auditor wants evidence that we're actually doing continuing education for our employees. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always done conferences and stuff, but, you know, 2020 was a bad year for conferences and we've never really tracked continuing education. We just like, yeah, let's do this conference or whatever. And uh, it's kind of ad hoc. And now it's like, oh, we need to track this. It's a good idea to plan something, you know? So yeah, digging out those old computer science books or taking a course or doing a conference, you got to do it. Which is like, well, you got to do it, but it's also... To me, that's like one of the, that's one of the, like my favorite things to do. Like I, I really like learning. So even in my spare time, like that's what I like to do. So yeah, like my perfect work, like work week is like, you know, a couple hours maximum a day of like doing the day-to-day -day things that you have to do and then spend the rest of the day, like, you know, reading or yeah, learning something or yeah, working on improving your skills. I like to, I don't, I don't try to do that every day. I, I like the idea, but I try to do that on Fridays. Like mm -hmm. Fridays to me is like the decompression day. I'm cruising into the weekend, you know? And so I, I try to put aside all the normal stuff and just something kind of interesting. Like before we got on this morning, I was playing with some Docker stuff just to, not, not that we use Docker, but maybe we will someday and just fiddling with it, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. I like that. 
until we get one of those customer requests that come in. I'm like, oh, I have to do some actual work now. And so I'm like, ah, love our customers, but sometimes they can be kind of inconvenient when they have, <laughs> you know, yeah. legitimate complaints about things that need to be fixed. Or when there's like an ops emergency and you got to drop yeah. everything and, and yeah. fix it. You had some of that going on this this week, I I know. Yeah, both both you and Star got to experience <laughs> that that those ops emergencies. It was it was actually funny. So Star, you know, was on vacation, but Star was still on call for part First of that night. time. Yeah, because I was. Yeah, she had scheduled me to uh, take over. Like the, like yes, was it yesterday? Whatever day it was, but it was the like night Wednesday before. Morning. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So yes, yeah, so, so I imagine in the future uh, she might schedule you to swap a bit earlier in the, in the but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel bad because she said that, like, that I guess they were going on a, they had like a, to get up early for a road trip and it's like 2 a.m. Right. or something. And, <laughs> or, or actually, it was like 4 a.m., I think, by the time mm-hmm. <laughs> that every, you know, the alerts died down. Yeah, the, the bad part was that there wasn't really anything to do. There was a spike mm-hmm. in, in memory usage on our, on our Redis cluster, but it resolved itself. But only after sending some alerts saying, hey, somebody better pay attention to this, you know, because yeah. that's. That's a critical part of our infrastructure. Well, I mean, that's ha- that happens. That's happened to me like a few times. I mean, that's usually the experience, like my on-call experience, to be honest. Like, and if it's worse than that, like, <laughs> there's a good chance I'm like waking you up, anyways. But I mean, like, that's <laughs> part of you know we've got the you have the system well architected at least to the point where if there is something, it does usually resolve itself. But still, you need someone to sit up with it and babysit it until it does Mm -hmm. just to make sure. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be totally unfair that you're the one who, you know, like builds the system and also has to like babysit it all the time. Like, so (laughs) our on-call schedule is like a more of like a, it's like a babysitter rotation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny though that you mentioned that because I was, so I was looking at this vacation schedule. It's like, Oh, when should I take vacation? So I went and looked at the pager duty rotation to try and schedule my vacation away from my rotation on yeah. pager duty. So, you know, didn't have to swap <laughs> and uh pager duty has changed the UI a little bit since the last time I looked at it. And it's, I got, I logged in and it's like, when are you on call next? And it says, you're always on call because you're I'm, level the, one. I'm the, I'm the backup schedule. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. And that's a problem. I've been thinking about that. So you're not, you're not the only one worried about that, but yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Like, yeah. I mean, I haven't, it hasn't been a quality of life issue for a long time because we've had so few problems, but still I am that backup. If it goes like, what is it? More than half an hour or something, then, then I, I get woken up, but it was just yeah. kind of funny to see you're always on call. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I'd say that's the the major downside of our business is just the the that na- the nature of that and also just the ex the nature of expertise like like I feel sim- like it's I feel like when I leave it's like much harder on the team like solving like a lot of the customer support issues that come up related to our our libraries and things and I mean that's that's part of the reason we've wanted to like bring more people in the business but then you end up with more people in the business and then you're, you know, you're tied to a management role that you can't leave too. So there's mm-hmm. trade-offs there. It's the struggle of all the bootstraps as operators that are small like us. Like yeah. How do, I, how do we get time away when I'm, you know, the solo founder or maybe it's two co-founders? Like, how do we take a break? Like yeah. you know, Justin has talked about this with their customer support for Transistor, right? Like they felt like they were always just having to stay on top of that and they could never take a break. And so they, they hired someone to, to help out with that. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and having, having Kevin around has really helped like spread the rotation out and mm-hmm. he's taken up a lot of, you know, the op stuff and gotten, gotten familiar with it. So yeah, he's taken an interest in it, which is. Yeah. Good. It's yeah. Been, been great for me. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard problem to solve because. I mean, you, yeah, you could add people, but then you gotta you gotta pay those people, right? And so that profitability takes a hit, you know. So yeah, it's a balance. Yeah, and and I mean, like, I think like I don't know about you, I I would I prefer to stay small. Like, I don't think I I've moved past the idea of like I want to like you know have a company with tons of employees or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I think that that actually would make like I wouldn't be as happy with that situation probably as with our current situation with, you know, a few employees and small team. And like, we, we probably spend a lot more time trying to solve these problems than larger companies do because they just throw people at it. But yeah, I feel like but that. Yeah. 
that just introduces a different set of problems, right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. You, you really just yeah. have to pick which, which set of problems you want, right? Do you want to be, you know, tied to the business or do you want to deal with the layers of management and the people problems that come with not being tied personally to yeah. the business, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like over time though, I like, I think like I tend toward, towards wanting to like spend less time on the business or at least when I say like on the business, I mean like less time on those things that like I just have to be doing and don't want to be doing like I want to try to always be doing the things I want to be doing and yeah I mean like I know like just general like management stuff does not fall into that bucket of like what I want to be doing so it's not your dream in life yeah to be a middle manager no it's not even my dream in life to be like traveling the world you know like 200 days a year or something and mm -hmm. you know like preaching the gospel or something <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've thought about that recently too, like looking at uh, companies that, you know, get really big, whether they take a bunch of money or not, regardless, but they, you know, they turn into tens and then hundreds of employees. And I think about what would that be like to be a CEO of that kind of company? And I'm just like, mm -hmm. I just don't know that I would really enjoy that. You know, there would be a certain set of excitement. Yes, no doubt about having that kind of business. Like I'm thinking right now about Toby at Shopify, like, you know, cause I remember when, when Toby started Shopify and, and watched that grow and just thinking about like, it's gotta be pretty fun in, in some ways to be Toby, right. To be mm -hmm. on top of this organization and doing these cool things and seeing the impact that you're making and they've gone public. That's, you know, there's a whole lot of cool stuff there, but there's also a lot of annoying stuff there, right. That come along with those cool things. And it's like, ah, uh, I think I'm happy where I am. I don't think I need to be that. CEO of Shopify, yeah. you know, something like that size to have that fulfillment in, in my, my career right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm sure that they, you like find new, you find new ways to guard your time and it just becomes even more, you know, that's like what no one can reach the CEO mm -hmm. <laughs> usually, but like, I mean, it's all, yeah, it, it just puts you in even, an even more critical position. And I just, the, yeah, the pressure and responsibility must still be pretty, it, it just must be massive, but must be. Yeah. I guess I don't, I don't really know because I've never been in that position. <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, I'm just guessing. Right. Right. And you know, you know, life, life phases might change some things. And maybe when the kids are grown and gone, maybe you'll feel like, ah, oh, I want a new challenge, you know, something, yeah. something bigger. I think you see that a lot with founders like us who build something, sell it. And they're like, huh, maybe, let me try a, a bigger swing. Let me try and, you know, like, like Josh is doing right now. He did bare metrics. He sold that. Mm -hmm. And now he's, He's building out maybe, and yeah. I think he's definitely thinking bigger scope kind of Looks stuff. Looks like it, yeah. So, or you can just go buy a ranch somewhere and just chill, right? <laughs> right. Well, I think it's kind of like, I mean, it's, yeah, those aren't like unsimilar <laughs> to me. <laughs> like, I mean, I think like the, the big point is like, or the major thing is like you, if you're, you know, if you're financially set and you can kind of just like, again, you can like do whatever you want to do, then yeah, go do it. But again, like. Even, you know, say we like, if we sold the business and we're, you know, didn't have to work another day in our lives, we could just go buy that ranch and, you know, just kick back on it. If I decided to go and start another company, I wouldn't want to start a company that's going to de like demand, like demand my, you know, my time and involvement, like most companies do, you know, right. like I'd probably try to go start another honey badger or something or, or something, you know, maybe it, like, you could go larger scale, but something that has like that, you know, solves for those problems. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like, but I feel like some yeah, companies think... of the future are kind of like, you know, the, the ones like GitLab that take a more like open sourced approach. Like, I don't know exactly what being, you know, like in charge of GitLab is like, but I'm sure it's not a walk in the park either, but yeah. Experimenting with new ways to like spread responsibility around. Yeah. And, you know, maybe, maybe the answer is you, that that's a scenario where you do have to take a bunch of money so you can get those employees to make that lift. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think if, if we sold honey badger and we did something new, I think it has to be different in some dimension or otherwise, like, why did you sell it? Would, <laughs> yeah, it would have. <laughs> and uh, so maybe it's a different audience. Maybe it's a different size. Maybe it's, you know, venture backed versus doing it from scratch. I think it would have to be different in some significant way for it to be interesting enough to actually do, you know, yeah. versus just, you know, spending my, the rest of my retirement tinkering or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess get, like getting to the critical, getting to that critical point with employees is a thing that's hard, like going from what we have, which is kind of like where we're, we're so small that we can kind of like 
you know, we have things we have to still be here for, but we can kind of just like disconnect whenever we want to, for the most part, like take mm-hmm. a, you know, take a week off if we want to and just do customer support or be on call. Jumping from that to the point like where you have to, like where you say like have like 50 employees or something and you're the CEO and you can kind of just like be like, okay, everyone, like I'm going to be gone for a week, like carry on, which I think like you can do when you have other people managing people like, but in between that, there's like a very like, it's like if you're growing out your hair, there's like that weird... (laughs) you know, the, the annoying stage <laughs> yeah. where like, totally. it's just like your hair, just like you hate it. And it's like, you can't, it just doesn't work. And <laughs> you're like, yeah, it just seems like that exists when you're trying to grow a business where like, it's hard with like, you know, 10 people, all those, t- all 10 of those people like are looking to you for, mm-hmm. you know, leadership, like on a regular basis. And, and you're still like connected to the major centers of the business. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought of it that way. And that makes total sense to me. Those, those growing pains that you would get going from one yeah. phase to another. Yeah. And, and I guess I'm not sure, like having been doing what we're doing as long as we have, I'm not convinced that I want to go through <laughs> that pain that I know is there to get mm-hmm. to the, to get to that stage where I know that like, we probably would be in another, we'd be back in the position where we could probably, you know, take more. Mm-hmm. have more freedom but uh, you know or hire hire a ceo than to just run the business right which people do well i mean i, I wonder so two thoughts that i have I, I i wonder if if you're a venture back startup if you start from scratch with a bunch of money in the war chest do you avoid some of those growing pains because you can just right out of the gate hire a bunch of people right mm-hmm. so i i wonder that and then the Good follow-on th- yeah i have no idea and the follow-on thought is well, what if you, like in our situation, we've been around for a long time, we have a profitable business, uh, we're great. What if we take on investment now, right? And then that gives us that money to hire a bunch of people, right? To kind of, does that can yeah. help you accelerate through that growing pain phase, right? If you, mm-hmm. if you add, you know, one or two people here and there, that's painful. But if you add 10 or 20 people, I don't know, maybe that's a different kind of pain, but maybe it's a better kind of pain because like you get it, it's like ripping the, ripping the bandaid off because you get it yeah. all done at once. Well, that's uh-huh. a good point. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something that I hadn't factored in in that line of thinking. So yeah, I think you could be right that that is a common use of funding and capital investment mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah, I think I would be open to that idea if we had figured out the sales machine, like mm-hmm. if we could say, oh, we could deploy X amount of people and we know that, you know, X amount of revenue would come in because we're doing these Y activities. Totally. But we, we haven't quite gotten there yet. Like we have yeah. a really strong inbound, but we don't really have an outbound or we don't have this, we don't have a process even for dealing with like inbound sales. Yeah. Everything right now is right. Hands off. Right. It's so. not scalable. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we, yeah. So like we, we could be, we're, we're doing this to ourselves to some extent, just in our own, our own like lack of knowledge or experience in those areas that's part of the learning process so yeah um, we are I like I think it's I think it's smart though to be focusing on those areas now to mm-hmm. open up those possibilities in the future so that if we you know if we change our minds and realize that we could we could scale the business to a point where we can again have the same have the same thing that we have now only potentially better because we're you know we don't have those even the small responsibilities that drag us back in on a regular basis yeah. 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 We're just, we, we've, we're still choosing to grow slow and to keep it, you know, pretty calm. <laughs> keep that right. calm I mean, I guess that is, yeah, we, that's the point of calm. Like, yeah. Right. If we took a big chunk of money, we could hire the VP of marketing, the VP of sales, the, you know, the VP of engineering. Right. And then we could mm-hmm. pre- presumably step back once we got these people set on the, here's, here's the goal. Now go get it. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that would be a less calm company for sure. Yeah at least for a while. Yep. And even if, if that's to the extent that that's possible, like, yeah, I don't know. You still have to build that comp. I mean, you still have to build that comp, the idea of the comp company into that business. Otherwise you'll just end up with like, yeah, like 30 to 50 people that are chaotic and right. Yeah. Calling you all the time or emailing you. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess I'll like revise my, my statement is like, I don't, I'm not willing to like grind it out to the, <laughs> to get to the next level. Like if that's what it comes down to, I'm happy. Let's just like stay where we are for 
like I'm fine, like we run the business as an mm-hmm. asset and, you know, try to try to build the lifestyle aspect of it more than, you know, anything else. But if we can find a way to scale the business and then maybe, you know, invest in it so that we can accelerate that, you know, the, the jump, grow our yeah. hair faster, so to speak. <laughs> I like that. I'm terrible at metaphors. Like, I feel like this one might actually be working, but like stars, the metaphor person. So like, I've, I've like, I feel like I'm really on like, yeah, it's, I'm in a re- risky position right now. <laughs> Better stop on your head, right? Yeah. yeah. No more metaphors for the rest of the rest of the day. I think that the hair growth thing works. Just got, <laughs> have to take care not to offend all of our bald listeners. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So I went to a Starbucks this week and did some work inside of it. Whoa. With, without a mask. Wow. That's, and, um, that's brave. I still did, you know, the distancing stuff just because it seems smart. Right. <laughs> I was like h- hugging everyone, but yeah, they, you know, they've, it, they've got it all posted like they're, you know, it's like if you're vaccinated, you, the mask is optional and Plus I was drinking a beverage, so, but yeah, I did a little zoom, had a zoom session at the Starbucks and it was a novel experience. Very nice. Yeah. I I went to uh, target this week uh, for the first time in a long time. And yeah, I was, it was, I just put my mask on out of habit. It's like, get out of the car, put the mask on, go in the store. Right. Yeah. And I'm walking around and like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the people there didn't have masks. I was like, oh yeah, it's not required anymore. Really? Yeah. You know, I'm vaccinated. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just went on my way. Right. It's, but it's like, oh, yeah, I have to get used to this new reality of not having to wear a mask. But not everyone. <laughs> yeah. Although I still, I still suspect that like a large portion of the people that are going to take them off or aren't going to wear them are the people that were always not wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I will say if, if I were still doing mass transit every day, like I used to do, I would definitely be still wearing a mask if it was anytime cold or flu season. Like, Oh yeah. I'm not going back to that prehistoric animal way of not covering myself during Jeremy season. Well, some like there's that like, like flu stati- statistics, that I guess mm-hmm. have been coming in from the CDC for the, since the season is like coming to an end 2020, 2021 or whatever. And like very, like it, it seems like the whole like social distancing, masking situation, hand washing, like really drastically improved that situation. Like, I don't know. I forget what the yeah. numbers were, but it was like, it was it's like ridiculous. Yeah. It's like dropped like 99%. Yeah. Like crazy. Something yeah. like that. It's nuts. Which is, it's awesome. Which is wild. I'll get yeah. Like give it a little time for the data to get worked out. I guess because it's it just seems prudent. But I mean, either way, it seems like it's going to be. A, it's like a massive thing. So yeah, we definitely need to normalize mask wearing during germ season. No doubt. Yeah. Yep. I'm cool with never like getting sick again. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, and on on that note, like this fall, kids will actually be going to school. You know and It'll be, it'll be an exciting adventure. All yeah. those uh, snot nose punks running around getting each other See, that's, again. Yeah, that'll be the real <laughs> test. Like, that's just going to knock us out. My daughter's Tatum's going to starting uh, kindergarten in the fall. That's wild. And that'll be her. That's we did preschool at home. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's going to be wild. Your first school experience, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's is, a, that's I'm a, entering a new stage, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's it's bittersweet. You're like, oh, so exciting, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. It's also going to be weird because it's going to like it's going to force me to start interacting with other parents in the community, (laughs) which is like I think that's like my that's like my biggest like thing right now. It's like, oh no, (laughs) you better better watch out. Next thing you know, you'll be the president of the PTSA. (laughs) Right. You'll be organizing bake sales and. (laughs) (laughs) I just yeah. We're, we're definitely it's, going to be the, I think we'll be the weird parents in our, in our, in our area anyway. It's, it's funny. I've noticed this, this arc, like your first kid goes into kindergarten and you're like, so into PTA and PTSA, right? You're like, I'm going to mm-hmm. take care of all the things. I'm going to volunteer in the classroom. And uh, you, you're really engaged and involved and it's so good. 
And then like over time, you start to like back off a bit. It's like, oh, I don't really need to do all the things. There are other people that will help, you know. Mm -hmm. And then by the time, you know, they get to the tail end and they're ready to get close to graduation high school, you're just like, I don't even care what they're doing anymore. Like I, get, educate yourself, kid. Right. Figure it out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, had to maybe. basically educate myself, so you can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. But it's funny, like... Uh, Seeing seeing the new wave of parents come in every year to the, you know, the BTA and like and then all of a sudden they they go out again as the new wave comes it's, in. Yeah, and you've you've having been there like for a while. It's yeah, that sounds kind of like oh no metaphors. <laughs> so like 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 if you go to the gym, like if you go to a gym regularly and every every New Year's, you know, like every like yeah. the first two weeks of January, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, totally. Because <laughs> yeah. like everyone comes in and and is like just you know super dedicated and then over the next couple of weeks it's just they all filter out again and you're back to the same like you know 10 people in the afternoon right. or whatever all right yeah and all the, all the regulars get annoyed because it's like oh all these people yeah. crowd the place it's like yeah. all this exuberance <laughs> is just yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i i've ah. so the gym that's a open question for me right now so i i still have a gym membership i haven't canceled it but i haven't been since the beginning of the pandemic and even though I'm 100% vaccinated and feeling invincible, still the gym is one place I'm like, ah, I don't know. I still feel kind of uncomfortable about that. And yeah, still trying to decide whether or not I'm going to keep that membership. I, I, I really enjoy going, but I don't know. I don't really want to wear a mask while I'm exercising. That's just, yeah, that, that, that sucks, was mine you know? too. Like I just didn't, yeah. Yeah. And I just, and like wiping down everything, like I'm not a super sweaty person. Like, so I'm not the kind of person that really needs to wipe down the equipment as soon as I'm done with it. Cause like, mm -hmm. I just, I just touch it. Okay. Right. I don't, I didn't like, you know, have a bath on it. <laughs> I don't even know if they have like a cleaning procedure that you have to do now. Cause I, yeah. I haven't been to the gym. So, but I don't know. It's tough. I always, I, I haven't been to the gym cause I moved, I got my home gym in like 2019, the end of 2019. And so it's been that long, but like, I always I do sweat and I was all, you know, I, I mean, I was used to like just wiping down the equipment in between. It's not that bad. Like, especially if you, you know, some, you can even like carry a towel with you if you want, but most gyms have like, yeah, the whatever. Yeah. Bots so wipes, spray bottles mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, but the mask thing. Yeah. I, I just, the idea of like working out in a, in a mask does not feel to me, even though like, yeah, it could be a plus for some people, like the people that are like, training for high altitudes and stuff like some people like wear the masks on the treadmills and I'm sure those people are like sweet like <laughs> it's just as like extra challenge right but yeah yeah so I'm still doing the home stuff and it's just not as give it a try not as fun yeah I guess I should I should call them and say hey what's what's the deal down there I mean I figure like like the I mean from the what has been reported the vaccines are very effective and yeah, totally. I mean, I understand like the hesit hesitancy if you're, you know, give it some time, obviously, like that's prudent. Like, you know, you could waiting the wait and see approach is like completely valid. But after that, like, I mean, if if it's if you're immune, you're immune, you know, so at some point you have to start living getting back. Yeah. Getting back out there, <laughs> putting yourself <laughs> back out there. <laughs> it's not it's not a bad thing to be cautious. So I understand. Yeah. Just get back in the habit, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, like, to be fair, I'm also not at the gym, like with a bunch of people, like, you know, like spitting in my face. <laughs> so just to, just to be clear, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving this advice from, yeah, from my, my bunker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got the sweet home gym set up that I'm jealous. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I've reduced my routine a little bit lately and I've been doing, I've actually been doing more like yoga and like flexibility things because I, I always like go really hard with, with the weight lifting and I'm not getting any younger. And so, you know, I, injuries are more, more frequent. Yeah. And so I've, I've been doing two days, two days a week right now. I'm just to keep up the, you know, my main, the major lifts and stuff, but kind of taking a little bit, a little bit of a break. Have you done any of the Apple fitness stuff? Yeah, I did one of the yoga sessions on it when I was just Cause I did some, I did yoga last year and it, when I had some like injury stuff and it was good and I should have just kept doing it. And so I tried, that's why I tried when I first started getting back into it this year. 
and it was really good. It was a little intense though for a beginner like me. So I've, I've got like, I've been doing like this, like more like beginner uh, training, you know, learning the actual postures and stuff. But then I plan, my plan is just to use the Apple fitness stuff after that, because they seem like they have a lot of good, just general. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the Apple fitness stuff. I, I've done some of the yoga. Like I didn't do the, the 30 minute stuff. I did like the 10 minute stuff because okay. I'm a super beginner. And so yeah. I did their, their really easy yoga, which was great for me. And I've done their high intensity stuff, which was pretty good. Like I'm not mm -hmm. really an aerobics kind of person. Like I just, I run and I ride. I figure I get enough aerobics that way, but, yeah. but you know, when it was raining and cold and stuff, I just did the, the high intensity stuff. And that was pretty cool. I, I really mm -hmm. like that. I've done their cycling, which is okay, but it's, it's geared, at least the ones that I did were geared towards being on a indoor cycling machine where you can adjust the intensity easily yeah. and stuff. And I'm, I'm not, I'm on my own bike on a, on a trainer, you mm -hmm. know, it has I'm, where the wheel is propped up and it's on that little roller. And so a lot of the instructions in the thing are, okay, let's, let's dial up the resistance. And it's like, well, okay, I, I don't have that good of a setup here. I can't just dial up the resistance, you know? Yeah. And so I had to alter it a bit, you know, but, but gotta, it's still nice. it was get your weighted boots on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but they do have trainers like mine that actually do have remote control. And so you can do that, but I just don't, I don't have one, but anyway. I really enjoyed them. Like the, the fitness things are cool when it's, you know, they're set into 30, 20, 10 minute intervals. And so you can like, oh, what kind of workout do I want today? And yeah, I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I like the, I like the high intensity stuff for cardio a lot. And otherwise, like, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I could get into running, I think, but I just, I really like walking. So I'll go for like super long walks. But mm -hmm. again, like time is, a is sometimes a factor that like, you know, I'll, sometimes I'll even just like go for the afternoon and just, you know, start walking and end up back home some, you know, at dinner time or something like that. Like, I like that, but I've yeah. never been like, you know, going out too much. I, yeah, I've gone through a few running phases, but never really, it never really stuck. So I like the high intensity stuff because I, as far as I understand, it gives you some of the same benefits without having to run for an hour or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I too love long walks. Yep. I think actually, yeah, like that's like a great way to spend some of your just general work week just like yeah like that's like the good alternative to like you know sitting and grinding away at the desk for eight no hours doubt. a day or whatever so yeah yeah but this morning i was like wrestling with my kids and stuff and i was like throwing that like picking them up individually and like like lifting them up and then throwing them on the bed and then i was like okay now i have to go i have to like go back to work and they're like no no like we just you know we want like one more <laughs> <laughs> so like i was like okay like i'm i'm gonna i've got one more so i like pick them both up like one in each arm and mm -hmm. i do like i like i don't know what i, I would like i do like basically like a like a lateral raise with them <laughs> and as i do yeah. the lateral as i do this it, i'd be like i don't know what they weigh but like tatum's like over 50 pounds and of course they're they're like unbalanced but like my entire upper body just like I, like i hadn't done any stretching or anything so like my entire upper body just like cracks all over and kaylin like <laughs> she's like are you okay like she's <laughs> apparently it was like you know she was concerned for me so yeah I realized like man i'm it's not the not the good old days anymore <laughs> you're getting you're getting up there in years <laughs> <laughs> not that up there but uh, at, uh, you know at the age where you start to notice these things right yeah yeah but i'll still i'll one. still i'm i'm not past like the point of trying so <laughs> <laughs> so did you do anything this week i i didn't do a whole lot actually well i mean i did responding to those urgent issues like working but, you mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did not get a whole lot of work done this week no like yeah cool no you're good <laughs> like, i figure like yeah we yeah i mean like yeah, again, I like, yeah, I'm ready for a break. So I've just kind of been trying, I've been trying my best, but you're, you're coasting into that vacation. It's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been yeah. a struggle. It's also, awesome. so, but I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like that's, I think that's, we need to learn not to feel bad about that, you know, like having a, a quote unquote unproductive week. Yeah. And I mean, like if I'm, yeah, honestly, like I, I did things this week. It just wasn't as much work things, you know, dealt with things at home you know, read some books, that sort of stuff. Like that's still being productive, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought a lot about our, our project that we mentioned last week 
on the podcast about working together with Kevin on. I spent a mm -hmm. fair amount of time thinking about that. And that's one of those things that you can do on those long walks, right? You can thinking. still be working. Yeah, thinking, thinking is totally yeah. work. So thinking is totally work. So I did a lot of thinking yeah. this week and responding to urgent stuff, but I also nearly, nearly done on the compliance thing. I think I have 11 out of 150 evidence requests left to complete. Wow. So yeah, it's almost there. Next week, I'll be actually talking to the auditors. and Awesome. Yeah, it's almost done. That's and nice. you got ideas for making it easier next year? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Just plugging away. So, I guess we're cruising. Well, I guess we can wrap it. Yeah. Wrap it. It's been a good one. This has been Founder Quest. We're still coming at you mostly every week. And we really enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, I hope you give us a review, you know, iTunes or wherever you can review podcasts because I never do that, so I have no mm -hmm. idea. But if you're into that, please do. And yeah, check out Honey Badger, of course, because like, we love having more customers. And I guess we'll see y'all next time. Catch you later. Founder Quest is a weekly podcast by the founders of Honey Badger. Zero instrumentation, 360 degree coverage of errors, outages, and service degradations for your web apps. If you have a web app, you need it. Available at honeybadger.io. Want more from the founders? Go to founderquestpodcast.com. That's one word, where you can access our huge back catalog of episodes. Founder Quest is available on iTunes, Spotify, and other purveyors of fine podcasts. We'll see you next week.